TCM invites you to see another of the essentials, the films that define what it means to be a classic. Fail safe, Sidney Lumet, it's so terrifying. No one captures men under pressure better than Sidney Lumet. You know, one of the greatest film actors of all time. It's Henry Fonda. He's fantastic in this yeah, movie. Yeah, playing the president of the US. It constantly surprises you all the way through. Terrific movie. 1964, fail safe. It's one of the essentials, a riveting masterwork, a timeless favorite that embodies everything we love about the movies. Introduced by Robert Osborne and Alec Baldwin. Coming up next. Presented uncut and commercial free, the way it was meant to be seen, only on Turner Classic Movies. To see exclusive content and learn more about the films, go to tcm.com slash essentials. Fail Safe, 1964. This is not a political thriller as much as it is a great horror story. Henry Fonda plays the president of the United States in this movie better than anybody. Nobody works a film better in confined quarters than Sidney Lumet. A really fantastic performance in this film by a young Larry Hagman. Well, you can fight a limited war, and you know it. On my part, I'm not so sure. There's no such thing as a limited war anymore. Not with hydrogen bombs, there isn't. Once those bombs start to drop, you won't be able to limit a damn thing. Fail Safe, 1964. Always described as a political war thriller. I think it's a horror story. It is so good. It's so terrifying uh, what it says about war and the different balances of, of opinions about war, how war should be conducted and everything. But so brilliantly directed by Sidney Lumet with this impeccable cast, wonderful actors, but at the at the really the head of it, the dominant head of it, although he's not literally the star of it, is Henry Fonda. Well, I think that, you know, I, I've seen written for forever and, and in many, many uh, uh, places that this film, the, the rap on this film is that it always suffers by comparison to Kubrick's film Strange Love, which was a, you know, f far more ironic twist on the same idea of accidental nuclear holocaust or unintentional nuclear holocaust. And um, uh, this, this is a very underappreciated film. Yeah. This comes during that ride from 1957, beginning with uh, 12 Angry Men, of Lumet's most fertile period. I mean, mm -hmm. he just goes on and does Anderson tapes and Serpico and Dog Day Afternoon. Long Days. Long Journey Days Journey. Night. I mean, he does, he does countless films during that period. And then even after that period, he's doing The Verdict, and he did Daniel with uh, Timothy Hutton, one of my favorite films. And, uh, I mean, Lumet is really, uh, um, it's hard to believe, it's almost staggering to believe that Lumet received an honorary Oscar that was his only Oscar for his great, great, great career. Right. And as you said, uh, uh, you know, one of the greatest film actors of all time steps in, and Fonda is probably the best rendering of someone playing the president. Or the one you'd want to be president. Exactly. You have the same equipment we do. What did it tell you? It did not tell us what is in your mind, Mr. President. I'm telling you that. And you ask me to believe you. You must believe me. You ask for belief at a curious time. If we don't trust each other now, Mr. Chairman, there may not be another time. Uh, another wonderful element in this movie is Larry Hagman, yeah. a young Larry Hagman who many people over the last several years know as a sitcom star from My Dream of a Genie, and then of course is J.R. Ewing on uh, uh, Dallas, the famous television series. And you see Hagman give this performance, which is absolutely fabulous. He's fantastic in this yeah. movie. The only person in the film who kind of stands out for me a little bit is Matthau. But do you think that's his performance, or is that the writing of the character? Because the I character is written in a in a very kind of aggressive way. I think the, the issue lies with Mathau because I think that the script is a very smart script. I just think that Mathau kind of stands out a little bit. I mean, he's not horrible in the film. He's a, he's a wonderful actor. But everybody else is playing the realism of the stakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's going to happen in this film, what's potentially going to happen, is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, so uh, shattering. The other thing I like about it very much is the fact that there's no music. There's no underscore at all. You know, it's very real, all of that. And something for people to watch is how well Sidney Lumet works in a confined situation. But you never feel confined as part of the audience. You're never aching for them to break out and get outside. Well, let's have a look. Here's one of the finest films directed by the great Sidney Lumet with 
Henry Fonda also at his best. 1964, fail safe. That's a horrific ending. I mean, wow, what an ending on a film. Uh, it's also very interesting to see Dom DeLuise in there being very serious, very, very serious. And also, we should also point out that Walter Matthau, this was two years before he did Fortune Cookie and actually began his comedic career on film. And One of my favorite movies, yeah, Fortune Cookie. Yeah, yeah. Talk but, about Fonda's career uh, toward the, 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 the last Well, during part this period, he was actually going back to New York a lot and doing plays. He got good parts, but they were few and far between. He had a great part in The Boston Strangler, and mm -hmm. of course he did Once Upon a Time in the West for Sergio Leone and all that. But he wasn't getting the great parts he had had in the Grapes of Wrath period, yeah. Lady Eve and all that when he was younger. So he stayed in training, and he did go back to New York a lot. Uh, you mentioned earlier the image of the bullfight at the top of the right. film, which is explained at the tail end of the movie. It's this imagery that's in the mind of the Dan O'Hurley character. Um, but I wanted to say, uh, really, my, uh, tip my hat to him, because that's a very moving performance. Yes. And a very realistic performance he gives. I mean, to do what he's asked to do right. at the end of the film. And he's, he's one of our really underrated actors, oh, he too, is, Dan O'Hurley. He was always film. good. But again, this is a film that, that does suffer by comparison, because I guess people were far more in the mood to laugh. Well, yes, but I think it's great that we can see it now without Dr. Strangelove around to compare it to because yeah. it came out the same year as Strangelove. That had come out earlier. Kubrick uh, made sure it was released by the same company yeah. beforehand. Bad idea. So this was, you know, the tail end. So after they've been laughing, uh, they couldn't take uh, the same story, basically, uh, serious. And that's understandable. But now when we can see it kind of on its own, you say, wow, this is a terrific And movie. Fonda's fantastic. Fan and also, all of his scenes in that one room, with no, no pictures on the wall, a stark room, with one other actor, and uh, dynamite. What a great movie, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Well, stay with us, because right now is a preview of next week's edition of The Essentials. City Lights is a silent film that overlaps the beginning of the sound era. Charlie Chaplin is film. He created it, refined it, and made it an art form. I just love Chaplin's use of his body. He had an inexhaustible energy. I do think this one, City Lights, is his best film. Charlie Chaplin's City Lights. That's next Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can find out more on our website, tcm.com. Thanks for joining us for The Essentials.